Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Homemarker Podcast. It's me, it's me, it's the double G, the Golden Greek, Alex Arion. That was awesome. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Uh, I'm like, double G? I, I thought you'd be double A and like Alex Arion, but no, the yeah, double G. Double the G, double A, yeah. yeah, whatever, you know, both. Wow. Yes. Yes. That was cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I totally blew your spot because I'm like, what? Joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, the lovely Monique. Hi. Hi. I can't compete How with that. Compete with what? I didn't say anything. Jeez. That's nothing. That's nothing. We should freestyle rap one of these times. We'll get eyes on and we'll freestyle I, I can do, rap. I can do salt and pepper shoot. <laughs> I can do that. Awesome. I can. Awesome. Yes. Tremendous. Fun stuff. Good, good, yes. good stuff. Yeah. And now I have shoop in my head. Great. Yeah. Thanks. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening probably do too, or watching probably do too. So thanks a lot for that. I don't hate it. So what's new with you, my lady? I have been extremely busy. That's good. Yes. I have been reading tarot. I have been making organite. I have been doing hypnotherapy sessions and working on everything to get my certification. I finished my classes and now I just have my, um, you what, have what to I do like, it. It's, like, it's like, like called a, outside. Like, it's like, like when doctors have to do residency. Yeah. Kind of thing. I have to, you have to uh, pay your dues a little bit. Yeah. I have to yeah. like do all this work to go get so many hours to go with my class hours to get certification. But um, yeah, just working on that. I think the best part of it is the people who I've hypnotized to help them with something. It's been successful. And that is just huge for me that that's like, yes, not even because like, oh, I did it, but just because they got the help that they wanted or needed. So yeah, it feels good. That's awesome. That's yeah. why I want to do it. I just want to help people. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I've let you hypnotize me a number of times now and it's, it's not at all what I expected because I'd never been hypnotized before mm -hmm. to my knowledge. I mean, unless you count TV and movies and stuff like that, but anyway, never actually sat down and said, okay, I'm going to be hypnotized. And it, it was not at all what I expected it to be. Cause I remember, you remember everything. For the most part, I mean, I, I've got a horrible memory well, anyway, but, well, I, but I mean, like, I remember after it's done and you come out of the hypnosis, I remember like everything, Yeah, that, but that's it feels the like point. no time went by or, or like very little time went by. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, like when you're dreaming, um, or meditation, the concept of time is different. Yeah. It gets all weird. Yeah. yeah. Some people get somnambulism, which is basically where they fall asleep. What is it called? Somnambulism where they fall asleep. Which happens. I'm so, surprised it didn't happen to me, honestly, because I was very relaxed. Yeah. And, and sometimes if that happens, they won't remember. But I think it's like something like, I think th only 3% of people don't remember. Hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I've remembered everything. And I, I think it's been, I mean, I'm not going to get into what we talked about or anything like yeah. that, but I think it's been pretty eye opening, I guess. For, for me, because it's just like, wow, Well, you've been nice enough to let me try um, the things that I've been learning yeah. on how to help people and, yeah. and do them with you, not necessarily because you need it, but just because you're allowing me to oh. do it. Because I don't need it. Of course, I, everybody, I think we all everybody need needs it. something. I'm trying, I mean, not, I'm trying not to Every, um, <laughs> imply you've got issues. <laughs> I, I, th I think, uh, I think I, 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 our audience, uh, we've built a relationship with our audience where I, I think they all know what we say is, you know, we don't really sugarcoat stuff and we're not, we don't, we always talk about how we want the truth and, and we want to be honest, be honest. I got issues. Who doesn't? That's the thing. I, like who doesn't? Cause you said we weren't going to talk about it. Well, so I was right. trying not to talk about no, it. No, you're right. You're, I was trying to okay. be respectful. No, you're correct. You're because correct. the other thing is with hypnotherapy, I don't talk about my sessions unless it's with the person. Uh, sure. I'm having the session with. Well, I mean, that's, I can say be, like, I, hypnotized. I can say like, I hypnotized a person and did this, but I, I don't go into yeah, details. Well, I, think yeah, that, I mean, that's, names. that's just kind of tacky if you do that, I think. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's not an really professional. We, well, exactly. It's not really professional. No, I wouldn't think if you're sitting thing. there talking about, but oh, just because you're my so -and -so. husband doesn't mean I'm going to start airing dirty laundry. No, that's I why. That. No, I got that. 
dirty laundry. Wow. Now, now, now we've titillated the audience and we're not going to give them anything. We're not going to give them anything. <laughs> okay. Words are hard. Yes. No, no. Uh, so what you, uh, what is it? Inner child, mm -hmm, right? We did inner child, uh, which was very interesting. Uh, I think everyone needs to do inner child. I, I you know, I, you know, F it. I don't care. I, I will talk about th that part of it. Um, that was really weird to me um, because it, it wasn't, I don't know, I'm trying to think how to verbalize this so I don't sound like a, a sap um, or too much of a sap. Just be you. Whatever. I, I, I didn't, like, I, I knew consciously the, the stuff that would probably happen. I didn't expect it to be what it was. And it was really powerful. It is. It is really powerful. Like I cried, like a, I cried a, like a lot. But that's good. I no. think I just want to say, I think a lot of people don't realize like crying is good. It's purging. It's getting that emotion out because so many of us just like, okay, so I'll use myself as an example. I used to take all my pain, all my rage, all my anger, everything all my hurt and I would just shove it down in this little spot, like down, like in a pocket, like in my lower abdomen on my right hand side. It's like, that was my little pocket of hate. And my anger. English teacher in uh, high school, my sophomore year English teacher used to call that gunny sacking. Gunny sacking. I've never heard of that. I I'd never heard it before or since gunny sacking. And I it obviously made an impression on me because I still remember it where you take all your feelings and emotions and you stuff them down in, in, somewhere inside. And it's, it's, she called it gunny sacking. Well, that's what I did because I'm a suck it up buttercup kind of person. And you, you know, you take it and you just shove it down. And I always thought I'm going to save it for a rainy day. So, you know, the poor sap who I unleash it upon. Cause I was like, I will unleash all that is unholy upon somebody who like messes with me in the wrong way. You know, I'll just unleash all that on them. And finally it took time, but I just, I let it go. And I actually had a thought today about like, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't have that anger. I don't have that hate inside. I don't store it. I just release it. And it's, it's awesome. And it's really, it's, it's such a change from when you are holding it. It feels like a weight, but, um, for me, I like would shove it down and you have to release it. You have to let it out. And crying is one way to do that. And a lot of people think like when somebody's crying, they get uncomfortable and they're like, oh no, they're there. You're okay. You don't need to cry. <laughs> yes, they fucking do. They do need to cry and just fucking let them, you know? Like, who cares? It's nothing to be embarrassed about. I don't like to cry, but I'll, I cry. Like, I hate, you know, watching any movies that are sad because I will bawl. But I don't want anyone seeing me. I try to be very stoic. I've seen you cry, like, twice, I think, in all the time that we've been together. I don't like so Because I've always looked at it as a sign of weakness. Being human is weak, I guess. But again, it's just the way I looked at I'm it. I'm just teasing but you. I'm only teasing for you. myself, for everyone else, I've always been like, oh, no, let it out. It's okay. But for me, I'm such a hypocrite. <laughs> but no, at least now it's like I'm, I'm working on that, like allowing yourself to, because we all need to do it. We all need to kind of let it out and let it go. So I cried during my inner child session when I, met my inner child. It was so weird. Like I cried I, a little with when I did mine too. It was just, yeah, but it was, I bawled. Like it was, it was just weird. And you know, the little interaction that we have back and forth in hypnosis. And, and now is that supposed to be, I don't want to make the whole episode about hypnosis. That'll be another time. But is that supposed to be the subconscious mind that it's is, whatever you that want is meeting with the, I mean, I'm saying like the medical terms or, or the so basically you're moving your conscious mind out of the way so you can tap your subconscious mind your subconscious stores everything so all you're doing is you're meeting you're allowing yourself to go back to you as a child and be there okay okay be there for that child got it okay that makes that makes all right all right and it, it's sense. it's a way of loving yourself okay okay 
yeah well it, anyway it was uh yeah i cried a lot and it was very yeah it was it was just when i came out of it i was like wow oh whew. like i i always felt spent i felt like it had only I, I felt like i was only in hypnosis for like 10 or 15 minutes but it what it was like 90 minutes wasn't it yeah so yeah it was just it was very yeah, it was interesting it's really yeah we've done sessions really for like an hour hour and a half and you're like well it was 20 30 minutes and it's like but like you said like with meditation same yeah. thing the time is like we just had a meditation a couple of weeks back mm -hmm. where we did like a group meditation and yeah which was awesome it was awesome yeah. and uh it, it was what it was an hour was it an hour it was like half an hour meditation it, it felt it felt like it was five minutes it did. Like, it's already done like yeah. that was only like five minutes and yeah. it was 30 minutes like what so yeah time just moves differently i guess when I don't know when you're not distracted by everything and you're actually i don't know uh, well whatever. think about people get like just, road hypnosis where you're driving yeah, well, and i've like, had that yeah i've had that and you're like oh how did i get here <laughs> i yes, yes i i once drove from uh where was it it was uh, not springfield it was uh somewhere in south southbridge mass and got to manchester new hampshire it's about a two-hour drive maybe a little more than two hours and i only I don't know if I fell asleep at the wheel. I don't know if I was hypnotized. I had no idea. I wasn't the only one in the car, but I was driving. The person that I was driving with fell asleep. So I don't know if I was sleeping. I have no idea. But I just remember getting on the highway. And then all of a sudden, it was time to get off the highway. And I was like, what the? Where did the? And for the longest time, myself and the person who was riding with me said we time traveled. Because I mean, they were asleep, but I was awake and I didn't remember any of it. it you, you made me think of Michael Scott and the Niagara episode of The Office where he falls asleep driving. Oh, those sunglasses are dark. <laughs> yeah. But you, yes, you just said funny. something about time travel. Yeah. And I was thinking of like, we talked about like, you know, what is time? It's a man-made concept. It's a way to basically control us, you know, make right. sure we get to where we need to be on time. Yeah. And time travel and like so we had a conversation um with some friends last weekend and it was a really cool conversation one of the things that came up was kind of time travel and the sense of like nostalgia and like i i brought up the question of like did you ever like do you ever have an experience where you hear a song and it instantly takes you back to a certain moment in time the way you felt like smells can come back to you feelings and it's crazy I, I like i'm like that to me is like time travel yeah sure i mean yeah music uh i mean sometimes i will hear i i guess uh uh like our son will be uh singing one of the um one of the shows that he that he watches that we that i used to watch when i was a kid uh I'm I'm awful. I can't. I'm blanking on the dar the darn name of it now. I'm like we don't watch many shows. <laughs> no, I know. Well, anyway, sometimes he'll hum it just out of the blue. He hasn't watched it in a while, and and I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that. And it'll kind of take me back to when I was a kid. And like like sometimes my brother will text me uh, that he was just watching the Muppet Babies. Remember the Muppet Babies, like the original the Mupp Muppet Babies, not yes. the one that they redid or whatever, yeah. but the original one where they'd have like clips of movies and stuff yes. like that. And he was telling me about it, and and it just immediately like brought back all these memories from just being a kid. And so I'm like, what the hell? It's just so weird. A pup named Scooby-Doo. I used yes. to sit on my couch yes. on Saturday mornings with s'mores, pop tarts and a big glass of milk. And so nice. I actually like one day did that. I was like, we're going to watch a pup named Scooby-Doo with the kids. <laughs> and I got s'mores, pop tarts. So I had that with a black, big glass of almond milk. And it was, it was awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know what's weird too. I was actually just thinking about this the other day. I was I was actually standing right over there, looking outside, and I was thinking how I'm I'm how old I am now, and how I don't feel it at all. I still feel like I still feel like a like I remember what I felt like the first time I actually went on my own and went grocery shopping. Like when I moved out on my own and went grocery shopping, I remember how I felt. I was just like, this is weird. Like I'm a, I'm an adult now, quote unquote adult. And and I, I still, I still feel like I did then. Like it's weird, but you know, I've had all these different things that have happened obviously since then that you're supposed to do when you're an adult, you know, you get married, you have kids, all that stuff, right? Buy a house, all, you know, all those things. And I, I still feel like, 
all the same stuff interests me. I still like the same music that I liked back then. Uh, I, I still watch the same movies and TV shows, like stuff now, like contemporary things. I, very, very little of it do I find appealing at all. And it's just, it's just weird. Like I'm almost like stuck in that time. Yeah. With, with, you know, with everything and just the, the things I think about and all that kind of stuff. I feel like I've definitely expanded as far as that goes, but yeah, it's just, it's just weird. I've always been mature. Like even when I was a kid, I was pretty mature for my age, but there's like such a big part of me that's so immature. And I feel like I've never lost that. And I always like, anytime I go somewhere, like I always feel like the youngest person there, even though I'm not age wise, like mentally and not to, and I'm not trying to say, like, say like, oh, I'm immature or I'm not as smart as somebody my age or anything. It's just that mindset. And like this one woman I work with, like anytime she calls me kiddo, I don't know why I love it. <laughs> I think it reinforces that like, yes, I am young and it's not to be like young and live forever. It's more of just like that feeling of like not giving up that childlike sense, that imagination, that mindset of just being a kid, like we lose that. And I feel like we, we lose it so quickly. How often are we being forced as children and our kids being forced to have to grow up so fast? I mean, we're telling our kid, you know, like, oh man, years and years ago, kids like, you know, 13 years old are fighting in wars, allegedly. And we're telling our, when, when are you no. telling our kids that? What are you talking about? Talking about history. Are you talking quote, unquote, in general history. people tell kids that or yeah. we tell our kids that? Because no, I don't. Kids no, that. like I brought it up to the kids. Like, we're, was it like the Patriot or something? And we were talking about that movie. We didn't end up watching it. It was like, yeah, I mean, kids, like, uh, according, you know, to quote unquote history back in like the Civil War and like early 1700s, whatever. Yeah, I don't. Whatever. These kids young, you know, they yeah. work on farms, they go to war young and everything. And supposedly, allegedly, again, why I say allegedly, because who knows, who knows what we're being told. But it's like, we have this opportunity to let our kids be kids. So why not do that? Let them be kids and yeah. keep some of that, you know, throughout life. I think, I yeah. guess that's what it is. I just want to keep a part of me, that child part of me, like with me still, my inner child. Gotta let yeah, it come out and play. Yeah, yeah I agree, hundred percent. I agree. Um, yeah, it's important. It's important. I think if more people had that childishness, playfulness about them, you know, people weren't so serious about stuff all the time. Yeah. It's it's really too bad now because you see, like, younger and younger kids in in public schools are getting exposed to this divide and conquer racism and all that kind of nonsense mm -hmm. like it's just all that social engineering is taking place earlier and earlier now so it's it's really too bad uh you know it'd be nice if something wow that was, that was, that was really loud yeah it'd be nice if something changed culture wise as far as that kind of stuff goes but yeah. what are you gonna do you know you can only do what you can do you can only handle what you can handle we knew when all this stuff started happening that we didn't want to put our kids through it. So we did what we had to do and we pulled them out and we homeschooled. So some people don't have that opportunity. Uh, you know, some people move things around in their life and make the sacrifice. You have to determine what's important to you. Yeah. How important is it for you? And again, everyone's situation is different. Kids. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, not everyone has, of course has that ability to do that, you know? No, and it's, it's not easy. It's a big, it's a big, change that you have to make you make a lot of sacrifices uh you know and and as far as like the whole and kids don't socialize if they're homeschooled that's such nonsense that is like the biggest crock of shit or just have a bunch you of know, kids and then they can socialize <laughs> with each other right yeah but that's i mean that's just nonsense kids kids are fine they get socialization when they see family members you know you know what i mean and when they go out yeah they go out right so it's not like and and really being in school, what, what the 20 minutes you get at recess when you're, you know, first through third grade or whatever it is, that's your socialization. You're worried about your kid missing out on, you know, but anyway, um, that, yeah, that, that's the argument that even, you know, people in our own family made to us when we said we were, no, we're pulling our kids out of school. That was what they said to us too. And it's like, no, <laughs> too bad. But 
with our middle child, we were homeschooling until he went into kindergarten. So like preschool and before that, getting him ready. He's very, very smart. While he was in kindergarten, he actually regressed. So, yeah. I mean. Yeah, it, he regressed in them and all the, you know, the COVID stuff happened in 2020. And he was, you know, they, they, they were doing remote learning for a little while. I would, you know, I'm sitting right there with him. So I see what they're doing. It's like, dude, we did this before he was in kindergarten. This is what he's on. Like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. He, so, so, so now we that's get when to I go said, at you our know what? Done. Yeah. Um, well, at his pace, not well, ours, but his. Uh, yes. Yeah. At his, of course. And that's, and that's the beauty of it. Like, you see, like, okay, he's really excelling at this. Great. We practice it all the time. You know, we still practice it, but we don't focus as much on it. And he takes as much or as little time as he needs to grasp a concept and then work on it and practice it as much time as he needs. If he needs 15 minutes, awesome. Great. Gets it just like that. Awesome. But there's been times where we're sitting here at the kitchen table for two hours That's and it, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Own, they all have their own rate. Yeah. That's all. And it, but it's fine. It's not like he's got a bell ringing. Yeah. Said, okay, time to get up and go to your next class or, yeah. talk, you know, whatever. It's, it's, you can get up, go to the bathroom when you need to. Oh, okay. You're getting frustrated. Hey, you know what? Let's take 15 take minute break. break. Let's yeah. go, you know, whatever. It, it, you have that ability to, you know, that freedom where it's still learning, but he's doing it at his own pace. And I mean, right now he's, he'd be in first grade, right? Mm -hmm. But he's doing second grade. He's already halfway through a second grade year of, a homeschool curriculum that we're doing just I mean, and that's him moving at his own pace yeah so it, you know uh, anyway and you do a great homeschool. job with them yeah well alex does i'm just i'm, I'm <laughs> the majority i'm just his dad i, I want to see him succeed i know but you do an awesome that's job. all uh, uh thank you i'm do the best i can like any, any that's all you does. can do that's all you can do but yeah, anyway, that, 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 to me, that was like the biggest thing was when we, we when I saw what was going on at school, I was like, you know what? No. Nah. And we were lucky. We actually had, had them in a, in a really good school mm -hmm. where the teachers actually. Yeah. Montessori. Yeah. And they would check in with us and tell us, you know, any concerns that they had. And, and, and it was really cool because they would call not just if there was a problem, but they'd call, it was like once a month where they'd call just to kind of check in. Yeah. And, and it was really, really nice. Really, you know, I, I'd never had that happen when I was a kid. And, you know, our oldest didn't have that happen when he was in, you know, before Regular. he got into that Montessori yeah. school. So, I mean, I know teachers, they all do their, you know, everybody does their best, hopefully. But when all this stuff started happening with 2020 and all the nonsense with the all the social engineering going on with but the masks and stuff. I that's what I said. You know what? Everything happens for Darn. a reason. It's like everything happens for a reason that brings you to the point you're at. The universe is going to push yes. you to where you need to be. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I feel like all the circumstances that have happened in our lives that have allowed me to be home, mm -hmm. it, it all happened for a reason. It wasn't, it wasn't the greatest set of no. circumstances, but it all happened for a reason. It was meant to be, Yeah, you know, so. And that, and that's what you have to do. You have to turn it, even if it's not the greatest of situations, turn it into a, this is the path I'm supposed to be on. The universe is forcing my hand at it. So let me find the bright side. Make lemonades out of that, yes. out of those lemons, right? Yes. <laughs> Add a little vodka to it if you need to, yeah, but you yeah. know. Why not? So yeah, anyhow, uh, we, we, speaking of like going back, Inner child or inner child childhood nostalgia that kind of stuff. We actually watched a few movies. Yeah. Which yeah we haven't have we done any movie type review shows in a while. We did Con Air like that's last right we did month. okay we did uh we we will do that from time to time talk about movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to do like a movie review type thing, but I thought it was kind of cool because we watched um what was it Kong Skull Island yes. first yes which we had seen before but. Mm -hmm. Uh, our oldest wanted to watch it. So we watched it with him. And then we watched Godzilla versus King Kong. Is it Godzilla versus King Kong or Godzilla versus Kong? Whatever. The one that just Godzilla came versus out. Kong. <laughs> the movie that just came out. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was. 
I didn't I, hate it. I didn't hate it, but I swear all I see is CGI. Like now none of it looks realistic to me at all. I was, none I was of saying it, to Alex. Even some of the people. I, I was saying to Alex, I was like, I remember when we used to watch this and say, wow, that looks so realistic. Yes. And now it's like, oh my gosh, it's so CGI. Going back to movies we thought looked realistic and looking at it again, like, wow. And it's like, is it because once well, you- Well, give an example of a movie you thought looked realistic and then move it back. Okay, so for example, we were watching like the Star Wars movies, things like that, that, okay, you know, sure. kind of for the time we thought, wow, that like some of it was still obvious, like, but some of it's like, oh, wow, that looks really good. Yeah. Um, even Kong Skull Island. I remember when we saw that, when it first came out a couple of years ago, I thought, wow, that looked really good. They did a really good job. Yeah. But watching it again, uh, when we did just recently, I was like, everything looks so fake like everything the explosions in the background like everything everything, every, everything looks like it was green screen every single thing which you know like i was thinking how cool it'd be to like be making a movie like that but then i'm like it's all green screen it's not like you're really like filming with it like a 400 foot gorilla <laughs> and, and, and actually i was thinking about that when we were watching the movies i was thinking how hard must it be for these actors now to get into character to see like like you know a big godzilla or king kong or whatever coming at them they're supposed to react it's like you're just looking at a screen that's got to be incredibly difficult and then i thought well maybe that's why so many of the actors now are digital creations because i don't know any actor that could actually sat there and look at nothing absolutely nothing and make it really believable i don't know I think but that's possible. I'm sure, I'm sure it's possible. I could probably but I just, do that. But I just mean to make it, you know, convincing, believable, you know, maybe that's why everything has gone so digital, even the actors. I don't know. Maybe it's just easier to just create that way or whatever. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I'm just hypothesizing. But anyway, it was very difficult for me to enjoy anything that we watched because it all just looked like I was watching a video game. Everything. I, I still watch anything with Kong. I'm like, I wish it were real so I could go live on that island with it. <laughs> I, ha I had to keep saying, because we actually watched uh, our middle child was with us as well. And he was totally cool with it. I, it wasn't, a, it, it didn't scare him in the least bit. So that was good. I had to keep saying to him, remember, it's fake. Because the, they're, they get you really well with the, the music the, the, you know, the effects and everything, the story, everything, they really try to get you to feel something for Kong, yeah. right? He's like the, you want, you feel bad for Because him. who and doesn't I want to, to keep, love a giant gorilla? And I had to keep saying to my son, remember, this is all fake. I don't want him getting any emotional attachment to fake shit. I had to keep telling, and he finally looked at me and goes, dad, you don't have to keep telling me. I know it's fake. I get it. I know it's fake, but I was, I was saying it for him, obviously, but also kind of for myself, because I felt myself being like, oh, fucking poor Kong. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. No, it's fake. In my mind, like, if this were real. <laughs> it's, it's fake. Remember, it's just fake. It's CGI. It's not a real thing. Don't, don't get emotionally attached to it. You know what I mean? So it was just, it was just interesting that even though I'm sitting there looking at it, and I know what it is. I know what I'm looking at, but it, it was, they were still able to, you know, get the, that emotion out of you, bastards. I always watch me like, if it was me in this movie, this is what I'd be doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyhow, it, it was, it was interesting The the uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Mm, sub level 33. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of, a lot of like the, they went into, into the hollow earth. Mm hmm right uh so that was interesting but I, I mean godzilla was i i used to love godzilla when i was a kid so that's why when these movies came out you know within the last 10 years the series of movies that they started doing i got excited because i'm like oh godzilla and it's going to be with the new technology so it's going to look real it's not going to it's not going to be an obvious guy in a suit knocking over models you know what i mean i think that would be better i want to watch the original godzilla now okay yeah, I feel because I just feel like it, it probably will be better. I might enjoy it more. I don't know. I always like real practical effects 
compared yeah, to same here. CGI. Same here. I think like the talent that people have with makeup effects with prosthetics. I mean, and Rambo talks about all the time, the masks they, that they can do. And I think the problem is like, everyone wants to go the way of CGI, but practical effects, I, I don't know. I just think they're way cooler. I, I agree. I completely agree. It, I, but uh, obviously the CGI is what they're doing the majority of, so. But now it's, I don't know, at least for us getting easier and easier to spot. Oh, man. I'm sure yeah. for a lot of our listeners, it is too. Yeah. Yeah. Once you see, you can't unsee, right? I mean, for sure, because I, now I can't, anything new, I just can't, I, I can't enjoy it. I can't it's suspend so my obvious. disbelief. It's, so remember yeah. like when effects would be really bad and you just couldn't not pay attention to it because it was so bad. Yeah. It's like that again. It's just so obvious. It makes it really difficult to get invested in it because it's just right there all the time. But again, that's part of hypnosis, allowing yourself to believe, suspending disbelief, allowing yourself to get caught up in a story. Yeah. Allowing it to be real for that time, even though you know it's not Yeah, you know real. it's BS, but. Yeah. Allowing yourself just for that time. Yeah, that's what makes a good pro wrestling match, being able to suspend your disbelief while you're watching. Yeah, You know what you're watching is bullshit, but you get sucked Well, in. I guess it depends on how old you are <laughs> and how stubborn you yeah, are like yes, me. <laughs> so, yeah, that movie was, uh, it was interesting, just to, all, all the different things that they did there going into Hollow Earth. Yeah. And it was weird. I, I meant to ask you about that, actually, how it was like, was it like a different atmosphere or something that was down there when he went up to a certain height? Yeah. And like he was able to, and yeah, again, was, we're yeah. not trying to give spoilers, but there was something else that I didn't get. Oh yeah. Sorry. Spoilers. Spoilers. Probably a little late for that, but. Well, it's not like I really talked about any specifics, but there's just a part with the hollow earth where they go in one way and all this stuff happens, but then they go another way and it doesn't. So it was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I whatever. So I was confused. Some movie cheese. We're, we're picking up on stuff that most people will need to notice, I'm sure. So. I usually do that anyway, though, with everything. That's I mean, true. You do. are. <laughs> yeah. You do pick up on stuff. You, you, you're very good at, you have that eye. I'm the queen of finding flaws. Uh, you, yes. And it, like, I mean, when we did that, that. Uh, the wrestling? No. Oh. Well, that too, I guess. But no, when we did that show with Human Vibration and with, uh, with Rambo. And we were talking about the C's hotel you were picking up stuff that they didn't notice. And I mean, when we were watching it together, you always point out things. And I'm just like, how did you notice that? And we'll have to rewind. I'm like, I wasn't even looking there. I was looking here because that's where the focus was. But I, I, I guess get hypnotized by whatever I'm watching on the TV because yeah, I always go for me. I have to, it's very rare, but it does happen, but it's very rare that I'm the one that, find something before you do or i just don't say it <laughs> maybe, yeah maybe yeah thanks make me feel be feel better for that minute or two right uh but no um uh, i i very very rarely even if i see something online um it, like you have to point it out to me and i'm like oh there it is okay like a lot of times i'll be like what am i looking at what's why is this here why am i looking at this you know what was really fun i i always will see faces and things um oh. like so like when you look at like so growing up in the house i had the bathtub it was i think it was like fiberglass but it had like a marble type texture to it with like the lines and i would always see faces and i could like see different faces at different times and do you remember watching that documentary and there was a map and i was like doesn't that look like this and that looked like this we spent i'm gonna see if i can find the pictures how long was it like an hour or so the just going yes oh. when we paused it i on think that it was one like part, 15 minutes it, i feel like it was longer than that because we'd go late we'd get up out of bed go and pointing at the screen look and right here is this and right here is this and then we'd go and we'd lay back down we have we kept getting back up because we'd notice something yeah which yeah like we had to actually like get up and point at the tv yeah. to show like do you see this and this looks like a person and yeah yeah, yeah. it was the the uh the deep sea documentary right where they is that the one where they were in was it norway no wasn't it the dude with the guy with the aliens hmm yeah i don't know i don't, re what, I don't what remember what was the name of it 
I'm thinking it's the deep sea documentary. No. You're thinking it's alien. So I don't no, know. No, remember the documentary. I'm trying to find the pictures now because I was taking pictures of the screen. How many documentaries we've watched? I'll find it later. Um, I was taking, pic- I know, I was taking pictures was of the, the screen of so we could like recall it. It was little, remember the older guy? He's probably in his like 50s or 60s, but he was kind of jacked. And he, the, he and the, this group know how to like call like aliens. It wasn't that one. You're talking about, you're talking about Dr. Stephen Greer. Yes. It wasn't the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. I thought it was no, one of it those. Wasn't, it wasn't that. It wasn't the other one either that he did. Uh, it was the- Because we were watching a bunch at that time. Right. But that's why I'm saying I can't remember the name because it was, it, it was about the, did we do a show on it? The deep sea divers that went and they found this object under, underwater and it was really far down and- I can't yeah. find the pictures because I just remember it was a map. It was, yeah, because and it was we showing looking, a map yes. of where, uh, of the location yeah. of the uh, the dig. No, no, uh, Dulce, New Mexico. Oh, Bi- oh Bigfoot Alien right, never Connection. Mind. I'm wrong. It was the Bigfoot Alien Connection revealed. Wow. I was way off. I was too. I, at it. least I guess Forget aliens. Me. Don't, don't listen to me. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, but yes, you're so, right. That, that is the picture. So we're taking a picture of for our watchers. I don't know like how much you can pick up on the thing, but I yeah. I just saw so. an alien head right there. Oh yeah. Hungry. See every, every time there was one where like, it looks like an elephant and there was like all these different things. And remember like the person oh, yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So like if, if I'll, I'll put it up in the um, video for our watchers and uh, yeah, but it was just like, we're looking at it and we're seeing all these different things. And it was so cool. Now, most people would say, you have quite the imagination, which maybe we do, sure. but I don't know, but that's Not always that. how I'm seeing things. I'm just picking up on all different things that might be there or just look like they're there or maybe aren't there. I don't know. It's just, I'm saying what I see. That's all. Yeah. I see things. What, what what were we talking about when we got onto that? I, 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 I pick up, I notice things. Okay. Yes. You're perceptive. You notice things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Movies. That's right. We were talking about the Godzilla mm-hmm. movies and, and those things. Yeah. Now I, it's, I feel like post 2001, I'll, I'll, I'll put that as the date any movie I watch that has like that CGI or anything like that. Now I, now I pick up on it right away and, and it just immediately takes me out of the story. Immediately I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm watching a movie. Okay. This is, Oh, that looks fake. Oh yeah. That looks, and it, it just takes me out of it now. We're so, doing that with documentaries too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> documentaries. Watch out. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, uh, just because it says documentary, don't just take it as the, as facts. I, and that's <laughs> one thing anyway. where you used to think a documentary was fact. Well, yeah, because it's got that stamp of approval on it, right? Kind of like the news. If you're watching the news, you're watching 60 minutes, whatever. You're thinking, well, it's the news, so it's got to be real. Documentary, same idea. You're, you're getting, it's not a fictional story. You're actually getting a story. But again, it's a story, but, it's, but you're getting more of a real life type of thing. But the more majority of them are people's perspectives. It's, it's just exactly. one it's, side. It's, one side. it's rare when you see a, a documentary that lays out all different views of it. And one thing I've been thinking about lately is a lot of times when you see like with these documentaries, just like with movies, a something production. And it just, when you think about words, what is a production? Yes, obviously, like when you're doing a documentary, you need people to run the cameras. It is a production in a sense, but there's something about that word that just makes my makes me feel like it's a performance. Yeah, I mean, I mean and that's it. And and if you think about it, really, anytime a camera's on, even if you are getting uh, somebody's eyewitness statement, for for example, or, or whatever, you, you get somebody's eyewitness account of an event that happened that you're doing the documentary on, there's still going to be that they might be telling you true things, but they may be putting more of an emphasis on certain things or maybe, you know, whatever. They're putting on a performance because they know they're being filmed. They know they're being watched. It's not like they're talking to their buddy 
over a couple of beers and nobody else is around and it could be open and, and completely vulnerable and honest with them. And even then, I mean, you but know, do you ever see documentaries that do that? They'll show people like together having a conversation and it feels so unnatural. Oh, yeah. Like, OK, we're going to sit down and pretend to have a conversation. Right. Well, but that's but that's it. I mean, and again, that's it's done, obviously, because the the person putting together the movie, the director, it's editor, it's a production. Right. But you, you obviously want to have you want to get people's attention. You want to yeah. keep their attention. You want to make sure that your, your, your story I get documentary that. has flow. So they, they have to do it. I get that. It's just, there's something about it where even though I feel like documentaries, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's always one side of things. And there are some great documentaries out there. I think it just like what runs resonates with you. Yeah. Because like, you know, we've watched some documentaries where it's like, we, we feel like there's a lot of truth to it, but a lot of bullshit. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, that should be with everything, in my view. Yeah. You should approach everything like that because, like you said, so it, perspective, it's everybody's got their own yeah. perspective and you form your perspective based on who you are as a person and the experiences and things that you've gone through in your life, the people that have influenced you in your life, everybody's got yeah. a different perspective no, and, based and on that. No, and that's the thing. That's why so, it's like, you know, trying not to be ruined by everything, but instead just kind of looking at it, like instead of old me being more, you know, I hate to use the word gullible, but thinking, oh, it's a documentary, therefore it's truthful. Over the years, I've smartened up to realize yeah. that it's always somebody's perspective of things. Right. So, but again, go with what resonates with you. And that's all you can really do. Yeah. I mean, I've always, I've always enjoyed documentaries and things yeah, like that. I do too. I love documentaries. Uh, and, and even still now, but now it's, it's getting increasingly more difficult to sit and enjoy watching really anything because I'm just... I'm I'm so much more interested in picking up a book and reading a book because I know that I, I'll be, I'll be entertained most likely because I, I mean, I like reading. So that's occupying my time. It's entertaining me, yeah. but I know that I'm probably going to learn something new, even if it's something I may not agree with. It could just be a, a different new perspective or way of looking at things or how, or, or understanding how somebody else may look at things or, or approach things or whatever. To me, that's just better now. I mean, I was always a big reader, but now especially I'm like, okay, I'm really going to buckle down and read a lot of books. And I have so many books that I've yeah. got on my list now to read. I have so many books. I like, cause I'm trying to read my hypnotherapy books, but then I have like other books. I have one like on my table that I just received that one of my friends from my hypnotherapy class, she wrote, she co-wrote with like a bunch of other women, which is really cool. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you just reminded me, I keep forgetting to look. So Former guest and our friend Jack Cullen wrote the book Runes of Steel. And yes. we talked about it, what, two years ago? Yeah, it was about one of that. our earlier shows. One of our yeah. Early, yeah. And so he came on the show and he and my brother were here and they sat down and talked about this amazing book. If you haven't read it yet, it's called Runes of Steel by Jack Cullen. It's awesome. It's fiction, but it's really fun, um, magical. It's, it's just like just listen to that episode and you'll hear me go off about how much I loved it. Um, but he had a sequel and I keep like, it's, it's only been available on Kindle. Cause like the whole like COVID happened and things were kind of crazy when it came out. So I don't like reading online things. Like you if I'm like going to have a book, no. Yeah. And, and I'm not a huge fan of that, but I, I have some, what's the thing? Kindle. Is Kindle that what, yeah. yeah. I don't like those. Yeah. I want a real book. I want paper. IPad. I am a very, like, I like tangible things. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, Especially I agree. when it comes to books. Yeah. I have to read my books and you notice too, my books, when I read them, I'm very careful with them. I don't dog ear my books. I always put a bookmark. Yeah. in. I'm not one that highlights or writes notes in books. I, I like to keep them very almost pristine if possible. Yeah. It's just how I am. And because I know that someday and a lot of the books that I read, you can't get anymore. A lot of them are out of print now. So I just like to, you know, keep them and, and try to preserve them as as close to as new as I can. That's yeah. just I've always been like that with my stuff. Well, but, I mean but with books especially. Um but yeah, uh you're talking about the Jack Cullen book. That's yes. cool. Uh I actually just finished a book by somebody that's going to be on our show coming up pretty soon here. Yes. Micah Dank. And he wrote uh, a, a six books, I believe. It's a series of six yeah. books, but only four are out right now. And I finished book one of his series and I just started book two. 
really good. I'm really looking forward to that conversation when we talk to him. So I'm not going to give away anything, but I just yeah, finished those. Good. But yeah, really, really good. Runes of Blood is Jack Collins' next book that follows okay. Runes of Steel, but it's not, I just looked, it's only available on Kindle right now. So I really, I, I don't know, part of me is like, can I have your permission? I'm going to ask him, like, can I just buy the Kindle, but print it? <laughs> can I like, I'll pay to like go to Staples and print it, <laughs> get it printed so I can like flip the pages. Okay. I just, it's how I read. I'm not going to apologize for being no. how I am. <laughs> no, I, I have so many books on my uh, iPad and yeah, I, I, I just, I, I feel like I can't get into it as much just sitting there and doing the old, you know, swipe yeah. and whatever for the pages. The I, I, I need, yeah, I need, I need a book. I yeah. just, that's just how I need. We need to do an episode on books, like some of our favorite books. Cause I have so many. Yeah, sure. And, and I get it again. Shout out to Jack Cullen because it was his book, <laughs> Runes of Steel, that kickstarted my reading again. I hated reading. I my parents owned a video store. I watched movies. And yeah, I once I read that book and I'm like, this is so good. What else is out there? And I just mostly reading books that interest me and a lot of books that I can learn from. But um instead of fiction, but yeah, it's awesome. I mean, uh we could turn this into a book review podcast, but just based on all the books I've read, if we were, if we really wanted to, we have a lot of books. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I love books. I actually, I just got a, a new book on uh, fasting and uh, I'm going to read that next because I, I, I'm going to, I'm prepping myself because I think probably within the next month or so, I'm going to try to do like a week long fast just to, just to see how I feel. Cause right. I, the most I've gone is three days and I felt great. Like I, I wanted to keep going, but I was like, ah, maybe I should eat because whatever. I talked myself out of doing it, but I felt fine. It felt great. I did a 48 hour fast and I was getting hangry. Oh, yeah. it, 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 the, the fasting, it's not so much a physical thing. It's a mental thing. You know what it was? It's, it's such a mental it, thing. It was, we, we went to go do, um, your wrestling hall of fame and was it Rhode Island? Oh, okay that award thing. Okay. And like, wow, like that night was going into like 48 hours and I was hungry and I was tired. I was past my bedtime. <laughs> Normally it's like, I can go to bed feeling hungry and then I wake up and I'm fine. But like when you have to stay up. Gotcha. Yeah. No, fasting is great though. It is. It's, it's very good. Yeah. I, I, and yeah, I get it. It's, it's such a mental thing. It's such a mental thing. I mean, and uh, one thing you can do anybody that's interested in fasting just real quick coffee just drink black coffee not not a ton obviously but it's a good appetite suppressant the caffeine in there and just drink water that's it I love water. just lots of water those, those are the two things i drink basically is water I, and coffee. again i say that, that if that works for me i should i should always quantify that statement and, and and again i'm not a medical doctor or anything like that but that's what worked for me and it was just it was easy i mean and speaking of coffee i just started drinking coffee again yeah after. you have it for a long time but we just got a french press yeah i mean I, I took like a month off just for no reason i just decided ah, i don't want coffee not have coffee this month and i had like no side effects that's awesome. Previously, I would get you know headaches for a couple of days or whatever. This time, I, I nothing happened, so that was cool. And then we got the the French press, and yes. that broke my coffee fast that I, that, so that I didn't realize I was on. But uh, yeah, oh, so good. Yeah, we made you made a uh, cold brew. Cold brew, right? Mm -hmm. oh, so good. And we use um, Valhalla coffee. Is it like Death Wish Valhalla blend? Yeah, it's supposed to be. What's his name? Zach Wild, the Black Label Society guitarist. It's like his brand of coffee or something. Huh? It's delicious. It's so good. I did right, a I tasty. did a cold brew Black and coffee. I let it sit overnight um, in the fridge, just brewing. And then the French press, you like push it down and it filters all the grounds out. And it was really good. Uh, it came with a little um, to make lattes, like the little. Whip. A little whisk thing, whisk, magic, yes, whatever whisk. it's called. Thank yeah. you. So it's just like this little thing. So you put it in the milk and it just spins it and makes it frothy. So I like to add, like I have homemade vanilla extract and then I have almond extract. And so I like to add just like one or two drops of each. 
and like add that in with my stevia and make like a little latte. And it was so good. And I just remember like I took a sip and it was like, wow. This it, it was really good. Yeah, and it's like the it. flavor kind of came back in waves, yeah. like the boldness of the coffee. It I'm like really not articulate. Like I'd be a horrible food critic other than like, this was so good. I ate it in three seconds. But um, <laughs> like that's how I'd review, like how quickly it was gone. If I did food review. One second, two seconds, <laughs> three seconds, four seconds. I ate it all in three bites. That's how good it was. Bites, there um, you go. Yeah. How many bites did it take to get through? <laughs> and uh, for this coffee, just like every sip, like you taste it and it was really good. But then like a moment later, it kind of like come back and it was amazing. I got really excited. Like I make this. It was good. Yeah. It was tasty. Very good. Yeah. So anything else you want to talk about? We kind of didn't really talk about any one specific thing. We kind of went all over the place this we week. We didn't, but sometimes it's just fun to talk. Yeah. What the hell? Especially like we've been having like a lot of guests lately and I just like when we can have random conversations. I think it's fun. Yeah, you know, that, that's, we can have a conversation with a guest. We can have just a conversation between the two of that's us. That's what I mean, between us. And it's, and that's what this is. It's just a podcast where we just talk anyway. We, just, so, we do what we want. So, it's sometimes we show. Sometimes we stay on a topic. Sometimes we just go all over the place. I, I think it's, I think it's fun to do that once in a while. Why not? Yeah. Right. It's so, fun. Where can people find us on social media? We have a twitter now and that's it right yeah i just haven't twitter. done mine so twitter at homewrecker pod and i want to give a shout out just to like all the awesome people on twitter all of our friends oh, yeah. our family our what twitter awesome fam twitter community family i'm just like i'm making friends it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's just everyone the so we had um dave J on yes last week's show yes and just speaking with him and even just like eyes and you know all of our all of our friends we've met through twitter it's like the amount of love that i feel inside is so incredible it's so filling and i don't recall feeling like that feeling that much love even though people weren't in the room but like that this just natural just love this feeling of love with people ever and it's awesome because i it just shows the awesomeness of the you know the the people that we're in contact with it's you know a good, good yeah. group of folks truly truly like, yeah really really good group of folks and we've had the pleasure of talking and and becoming friendly with with a lot of really really just great people truly good like, human beings yeah exactly just it, any anything else aside just great you know just great people yeah that i i see honestly i see big things in the future for all those folks he, oh my gosh and the amount of talent couldn't happen to a better set of people like seriously like just oh yeah just just great and, and i mean and they know who they are no need to name names or anything like that anybody that's been on our show previously obviously you know who it is who mm -hmm. we talk about but just world-class people that's all i'm going to say just class people all around yeah and it's like just showing like you don't need a podcast you don't need to be a guest on a podcast to make an impact with what you're putting out there there's just so many awesome people and i just want to give a shout out to everybody you know our twitter fam and just you know send you love and give my gratitude because it's just awesome so thank you yes thank you very much not getting that shit with mines i'll tell you that <laughs> All right, and so there's so no just Twitter, no Twitter? Instagram anymore. That's nope. done. And it's it's funny because a lot of people are going actually from Twitter to, to Instagram, Instagram as well. We're not we're not doing that. I'm not dealing with it again. Can't, yeah, they they won't let it, we got banned for something or other. So I didn't whatever. do anything wrong. Anyway, <laughs> they hate uh, us because they hate us. <laughs> we have a website too. Homerecordpodcast.com. And where can people find you? Well, first, personally, we're on YouTube. Oh yeah. And Bridie on yes. and Odyssey when they let us. When they let us. Yes. When they let us. Because apparently some of our files are too large and won't let me upload them. So sometimes we're on Odyssey. When we so, can be. Yes. So Find please us, subscribe uh, and like. Yeah, I think now it's 
they're changing everything to like I know like Apple Podcasts now you don't subscribe anymore you follow I believe that's what I I gotta go on the app to look but I've read somewhere that that's what they're doing now click a button so um, you just automatically download our podcast yeah, episode that's all how's that that's it and if you're so inclined five star review if you don't mind we Jeez. appreciate it it just helps to grow the audience grow the visibility of the show. And it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy when we get a five-star review. Yes, five-star. So if you could do that, please and thank you. We appreciate it. And you. Me. You can find me at my website, tarotbymonique.com. I also have an Etsy shop, Wonders by Monique. And I will be doing hypnotherapy soon. So hopefully in the next few months, I'll have a website for that. Awesome. Yes. Very awesome. And I'm at- you? the Alex Arion on Twitter. I notice a lot of times I'll like a post and then like two minutes later, I'll notice that Homewrecker Podcast liked the post too. And that's you on the Homewrecker Podcast account. So anybody listening, anybody ever thinks that's weird? It's not me going and jumping between accounts. I'm not that fast and I'm not that good at doing that. So, yeah. And but also, it's just kind of funny. Yeah. We, we always but like the same not stuff. Not just that, but also I'll like something or I'll follow someone. And then all of a sudden it's not liked or followed. And I'm like, I know I freaking did it. Like we were, I was following somebody, I think it was my own personal account and they followed me and I like, oh, that's really cool. And then I looked and I'm like, I'm not following them. I know I did. Yeah. That's happened to me a bunch lately. I've noticed. I'm like, you know, I haven't seen any posts from so-and-so. And then I'll look and I'm like, when did I unfollow? I never unfollow. Why? So if it looks like we're liking and then not liking it, or following and unfollowing and following again, it's not us. It's Twitter. I, I've seen a couple of people post that they've had similar things happen. So I don't mm-hmm. know. It, it seems you, like it happens every time I update the app on my phone. It seems like something weird happens. I don't know if it if that's just in my imagination or what, but I know for sure that I unfollow. I don't, but my account unfollows people and. I didn't do it. And then I'll have to go and refollow the person. It's just we talked about weird. with eyes and I caught it. Was it yesterday or the day before I was typing something and my phone after I typed it automatically changed the word to something it wasn't supposed to be. Oh, so does that all the time. yeah. And I'm like, darn it. So I'm glad I caught it. But yeah, if you see a typo, whatever. <laughs> you get what the you, gist. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Because they don't have an edit button. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. So website. You did your Twitter. Oh, oh, back to me again. Sorry. Alex Harry on fitness.com. And that's getting all redone and whatnot. So don't even go to it. I don't even want to plug it anymore. Oh, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get it all redone before I start sending people there again. Anyway. Yeah. 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 So that's that. That's that. All right. So hope you enjoyed the ride. The ride. It was a ride this week, ladies and gentlemen, a ride. Words are hard, damn it. If, if this week's episode was a ride, it would be like, what ride would it be? Like, you know, in Disney, the Aladdin Aladdin magic carpet ride, maybe. Which one's that? Is that like the the little kitty ride? ride. Maybe the teacups. I was thinking thinking maybe the merry-go-round just because it's really, really basic. And all you're doing you is just going around. Basic? No, I'm just saying there's, there weren't really like ups and downs like a roller coaster ride. But you kind of, I don't know. Hey, Teacups? you're the one that you're the one that said this was a ride. What kind of ride would this episode have been <laughs> if it were a ride? You let us know. Yeah, let us let know. Let us know. But until next time, I am. I, I punched the microphone. <laughs> oh, sorry. All right. Until. <laughs> it was an until Okay, it's not gonna hit you back. I think you knocked it out. It's 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 good. Well done. Wow. I'm not editing anything this week. No, I'm just don't. Every day because I, I move my hands, I talk the with uncomfortable my hands. pauses. <laughs> I am clumsy. <laughs> I am who I am. Until next time, I am the Golden Greek Alex Arion, joined as always by my beautiful. Lovely, gorgeous, amazing, knockout. (laughs) My trophy wife, the lovely Monique. And you've been listening to the Homewrecker podcast.